In this video, we will discuss element classification and finite element analysis. This topic is very important because 3D experience contains a large library of elements, and your choice of element could significantly impact the accuracy of your finite element approximation. To recap, an element is simply just a section part of a larger body slash structure. This element, in conglomeration with other elements within the meshed body, can be used to approximate the solution with a high degree of accuracy. Five aspects of an element characterize its behavior. The element classification breakdown, from the broadest classification to the most specific, is as follows. 1. Family. 2. Degrees of freedom. 3. Number of nodes. 4. Formulation. And 5. Integration. We will now go further into each of these classifications in detail. This will provide you a better understanding of the element classifications, and will help you select the best element for a given FEA scenario. The broadest of the classifications is an element's family. As a new 3D experience user, the three main families that you need to be familiar with are continuum elements, shell elements and finally beam elements. Please note that 3D experience only supports three-dimensional elements. The next level in element classification is called an element's degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom are, the fundamental variables calculated during the analysis. For a stress-slash-displacement simulation, the degrees of freedom are translations and rotations. Continuum elements only have translational degrees of freedom. Whereas, shell and beam elements have both translational and rotational degrees of freedom. In the intro to FEA video, we introduced you to restraints. An example of a place where we are holding an object is the way this light is being held fixed at the ceiling. We will introduce you to some basic types of restraints for the continuum and shell element families in future videos. Also, in the introduction to FEA video, we showed you a brick element with nodes located at the corners of the element. This is called the linear element, and it may not be the ideal element for certain structural models. As a result, we now want to introduce you to another brick element. In addition to the corner nodes, this element also has nodes at the midpoint of all of its edges, for a total of 20 nodes. This is a quadratic element, and has some advantages over the 8 noded element. Let's look at a fillet mesh with 8 noded elements. When viewed from the side, you can see that the elements do not follow the geometry's surface. This is known as discretization error. When this same fillet is meshed with 20 noted elements, the discretization error is significantly less. The other advantage of quadratic elements, like the 20 noted brick that we just introduced, is their ability to more accurately capture the deformed shape of an object. Consider, for example, a block of material that we bend. The block will deform into a shape like this. The edges of the linear element cannot bend, so it cannot deform like the real block. Therefore, one must exercise care when using linear elements to model bending deformation. The nodes on the edges of the quadratic element allow it to deform into the same shape as the actual block. In the element selection video, we will provide some advice on what element to choose. As you get more experience, you will be able to use additional element types for your models. Next, an element's formulation refers to the mathematical theory used to define the element's behavior. Depending upon the object you are modeling, you may need to choose an element with a specific formulation. For example, this rubber boot and the crimped electric connector both benefit from elements with a special formulation. Next, integration is the type of numerical technique that is used to combine various quantities over the volume of each element, thus allowing complete generality in material behavior. Remember our 20 noted quadratic element? The integration technique that we choose will affect the accuracy of our finite element model. To show you this, consider the beam shown in the predicted tip deflection for two integration techniques for the 20 noted element. The two types of integration are, full and reduced. Full integration, under predicts the tip displacement by a little over 1%, while reduced integration, over predicts the tip displacement by 0.1%. In the element selection video, we will show you which elements to use for your initial models. 
Please refer to this chart for a summary on element classification.